Hi, Becca C. Smith here. <laughs> and it's been 30 years since I read this book and it changed my life. My entire foundation from how I outline to how I think of stories came from this book. So to say it's my favorite craft book is an understatement. I'm really excited to reread this 30 years later. It's been revised and updated, and so I'm hoping there's some new gems of wisdom that will blow my mind. <laughs> but it'll be interesting to see what 48-year-old me will think, because 19-year-old me was full of excitement and dreams of writing my first screenplay. <laughs> but now that I have like 50 plus under my belt and 17 books, because yes, I use the same methods from this book for my novels as well, <laughs> I'm just wondering what will stand out to me the most. Okay, I'm ready. Let's do this. I'm gonna try to read this all in a day. <laughs> all right, I'm ready to go. Here we go. Okay, I started reading the intro since uh, that obviously wasn't the edition I read in 92. He says it wouldn't be too long before we make short films on our telephones, telephones, not cell phones, and email them to our friends and project them on our TVs. So yeah, I looked it up and <laughs> the copyright of this was in 2005, which mean, which kind of makes sense because I get Sid Field uh, passed away in 2013. I should have known when in the intro he's referencing Kill Bill and Lord of the Rings. Um, yeah, this, is, this of course makes me feel even older because the revised edition is 17 years old. But I'm still, I'm still excited to see what, what else I will learn even though it's 17 years old. It still holds up though, okay? Ooh, okay, I love this. He says that it isn't a how-to book, that he can't teach people how to write, which is true. You kind of have to teach yourself that with a lot of practice and maybe tips and things, but you can't actually teach someone how to write. But he says it's a what-to kind of book, which I kind of love. He says what he means by that is if you have an idea for a screenplay and you don't know what to do or how to do it, that he can show you. And... <laughs> He definitely did this for me. <laughs> okay, I'm going back to it. Okay, this paradigm right here, um, I'll show you footage of a close up. Okay, it's been ingrained in my brain since I first saw it, or since I first read this book, because it's such a simple way to break down the three act structure. I use it to this day for everything that I write, whether it be screenplays or books. It's actually now weirdly how I see stories before I even start writing. It's like my mind automatically sort of sees these two plots, the way he describes them as anchors, and then the three acts that surround them. I'm sure if I scrounged up old notebooks and stuff like that, you'd find like a million of these little charts. <laughs> <laughs> because I feel like every idea I've ever had in the last 30 years has literally been written in the form of that paradigm because it just was one of those things that clicked in my brain. And then from then on, I just always saw stories in that paradigm form. Yeah, so still, still, still loving the paradigm. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get back to it. So speaking of plot points, he goes into more detail. And I love how he not only gives you the literal definition of the plot points, but examples as well. Because examples are the best way for me to learn anyway. And one example he gives is like in Fellowship of the Ring. Because I, <laughs> Lord of the Rings. He describes the plot point, he describes plot point one as when Frodo leaves the Shire. Because this is the turning point that leads us into act two. And the same for plot point two. It's the turning point that leads us into act three. And again, it's, it's crazy to me that that's just how I see stories now. <laughs> and that all stemmed from him and this book. It's amazing how one book can literally change your whole way of thinking of writing and stories. Mm -hmm. 
What I love about this book too is that there are there are entire chapters with just questions. Questions to ask yourself about your character, about your subject, about what story you're trying to tell. Even if you just skip to questions in chapters two and three, I don't know, it, it, it can really help you kind of hone down the story you're trying to tell or even help you come up with one in the first place. I don't know, it kind of works as like a guided brainstorm session, which, which I'm not really sure if I took advantage of back then when I first read this. I feel like I probably skipped over it back then, but I feel like I'd use it now just to kind of help me guide myself. <laughs> There's also a good uh, chart to help you shape your character. I love charts and graphs and things I can just plug my own story and characters into. So it's kind of no wonder why this book <laughs> resonated with me 30 years ago. I don't know, it was like someone finally learned my language or saw me in a way because uh, I just really, I just really like graphs and charts. I, it, my brain just really works that way. <laughs> Plus a side note, anyone that uses Shawshank Redemption as an example for excellent writing, <laughs> automatically gets my respect. Ooh, okay, it says, this is a good one. This is a good note. It says, know your ending. And I love this and I remember it so well. It's what finally made me finish my first screenplay back in 92. I was literally flailing until I knew the ending. <laughs> And once I figured it out, everything else fell into place because like he says in the book, I could then build all of my scenes to lead toward it. So know your ending. He puts it in all caps and bold, <laughs> which I find amusing because just in case you're skimming through the book, he's all like, know your ending, like you'll see it. It stands out completely. And I also love that he puts the actual examples of scripts so you can see what formatting looks like and what an actual script looks like. Because one of the things I hear from a lot of writers who haven't written screenplays before is that they like to try it because they like writing dialogue, which is awesome because yes, dialogue is so important and oftentimes really difficult to make sound natural. But in general, a screenplay needs to have a relatively even amount of action and dialogue. Because remember, movies are visual. So two people standing in a room talking at each other isn't visually interesting. Even if it's just a conversation, you know, they could fidget or move or drink tea or, or they usually do something. So a healthy looking screenplay should mostly look even. And I like that he says that and shows it. I do feel like even if it is a drama with a lot of dialogue, it still should have, at least in terms of visuals, it still should have a healthy amount of dialogue and a healthy amount of action. <laughs> Literally, has the story structure paradigm that I showed you at the beginning printed seven times in this book. I just counted. So no wonder why it's seared in my brain. In case you forgot, here's the paradigm. But like he quotes from one of the greatest screenwriters of all time, William Goldman, screenplay is structure. And I think that's why I'm an outliner with my books as well. Structure frees me. And I know that sounds contradictory, but it really does for me. Once I have the structure built in my head, I can, that's when I feel like I can truly explore my characters and the, and like the world I've created for them within the confines of a solid story. You know, if you haven't noticed, I'm kind of obsessed with structure. <laughs> my whole channel is full of structure. And I totally get that that's not for everybody. But for me, I just, I have, I have to have the structure. And another aspect of what I love about this book is that he breaks down first the scene itself and the importance and impact a scene can have within a movie, but then he follows it up with defining a sequence, which is a series of scenes within the movie. Like in Raiders of the Lost Ark, getting the idol at the beginning of the movie is a sequence. The next sequence is back at home and learning about the Ark. And then the next sequence is getting on a plane to Miriam. And then the famous Miriam drinking scene and the, ah, my hand. 
hand. <laughs> It just really helps me personally to block out my script like that because what you'll find is most movies have about eight to ten sequences. For some reason this makes it easier for me to wrap my head around like plotting the story. So instead of thinking of it as 40 or 50 scenes I have to plot out, which is essentially what you have to do, it's just more eight, it's eight chunks. I don't know, it just makes it less it just makes it less overwhelming for me when I'm mapping it out. Okay, I had forgotten about this and now I plan on using it for every script and book I'm ever writing again. <laughs> he breaks down the paradigm even further <laughs> by giving each act a beginning, middle, and end. I'll show you the footage here. <laughs> I mean, I haven't been doing this and I'm kind of mad about it because honestly, it's such a wonderfully simple way of breaking down each act because we all know act two is always a thorn in most writer's sides. <laughs> so breaking down even just like act two in three acts in itself feels like, I don't know, it just feels like it's gonna be really helpful because I always flail. I flail in act two. <laughs> I usually have it like, planned out, like I'll do the outline and I think I have enough for act two, but then I don't. So if I see it as a beginning, middle and end, I don't know. I think if I map it out that way, I think that actually would help give me the sort of beef I need to finish act two. So, so I'm gonna try it, I'm gonna try it. I finished! I finished! I finished in one day! Okay, the, honestly, the book, the rest of the book breaks down format, terminology, more specifics to help you actually write a properly formatted screenplay. He also has a chapter on adaptation and collaborating with other writers as well, which is good because he suggests ground rules, <laughs> which is really important. But one thing to note is that he gives you kind of a list of the terminology. And the thing is, is that I've kind of been drilled, this has kind of been drilled in my brain from other classes and notes and stuff like that I've gotten over the years, is that things like giving camera directions, like extreme close-up or medium shot, they've kind of been said to me that that's, it's a little bit of a no-no, just because it's the kind of things that you'd want to leave to be left up to the director like he's the one who frames the shots and things like that it'll be their vision of your script so kind of like let them decide what angles they want but it is still good to know because hopefully at some point you'll have a shooting script and you know you need to know that terminology so in that sense it is good to know i just wouldn't necessarily put it in your first draft because then it looks like you're trying to direct the actual screenplay instead of just writing the story. So take that as you will. I just, that's just what I've learned over the years in terms of, but you know, who knows? Who knows? I feel like everything's subjective at this point. <laughs> but bottom line is you should definitely know them. And he also emphasizes backing up your work and protecting your work. <laughs> he mentions copywriting the script. <laughs> and registering it with the Writers Guild. He also suggests mailing it to yourself and keeping it sealed, but this method no longer works. And you know, this was written in 2005. The, uh, the updated revised version is in 2005. It's just something that isn't really used now because there are just too many ways to open a sealed envelope at your house while making it look like you haven't opened it. But registering it with the Copyright Office and the Writers Guild is something I always recommend. I even have a video showing you how to do it on the Writers Guild Registry website. But I am so glad I reread this. <laughs> I got all the nostalgia feels. Because <laughs> you know, it always amazes me when each writer finds a way to write that makes everything kind of click into place. For me, it was this book. I've been writing since I was a kid, but after reading this book, Sid Field's Methods, I don't know, they just really resonated with me. Like I said, it changed the entire way I saw stories and structure. And I will forever be grateful <laughs> that my friend Otto gave me this book 
when he saw that I was struggling to finish any of my scripts. <laughs> and I've said this story before, but it may have been my dad's words, just finish one, <laughs> that got me to finish my first screenplay. But it was this book that helped me to actually do it and make something worth reading. Although I'll never show anyone that script ever. <laughs> but at the time, I thought it was worth reading. <laughs> <laughs> and in light of paying it forward, I bought an extra copy to give away to one of you. So I can only mail this to the US, so unfortunately I can't offer it to anyone outside of the US, but there is an email below in the description if you're interested. Just drop me an email saying that you'd like to be entered into the raffle. And a week from now, so March 28th, I will email the lucky winner and send it off. So let me know in the comments of any craft books that have changed your life. <laughs> I've read a lot of them over the years, but I'm always up for learning new techniques and methods to improve my writing. <laughs> but thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.